When you're walking along the city streets, there's always so much to see and hear. Cars and buses roar past and honk loudly. People chatter and shout to each other as they go to work and do their shopping. The store windows are colorful and bright, but do you ever stop and look down? What's going on deep in the ground under your feet? Let's take a peek. Just underneath the sidewalk, you'll find water pipes taking water to homes, stores, schools, and offices. Here are the wires that go up into the buildings to make people's telephones work and to let them use the internet. Other cables carry electricity so that everyone can watch TV, charge their gadgets, and turn on the lights. When it rains, water flows through the gutters in the street. It gushed, gushes down into the storm drains below where it is carried off to nearby rivers. It's not all cables and pipes underground. There are living things here too. Earthworms burrow their way through the soil, loosening it up so water and air can flow through it. Earthworms are expert recyclers eating dead plants in the soil. Look closely and you might see centipedes wiggling through the soil looking for worms and small insects to eat. Millions of tiny li living things called microorganisms are also in the soil. They help to break down the dead creatures and plants. Mmm, tasty. Now go a little lower and you'll be in the sewer. Hold your nose, this is where the wastewater ends up when it goes down the drain or you flush the toilet. Can you spot any rats? So many stories from history lie under the ground. If you dig down a bit deeper, you might find objects left behind by people who lived here hundreds or thousands of years ago. There could be gold coins, pottery, or swords. Don't be spooked, but there might even be skeletons. These things have been buried all this time and can tell us a lot about how people used to live. Who do you think wore this helmet on their head? Archaeologists dig for these objects and study them to learn more about the past. What's that loud rumbling noise making the ground shake? It's an underground train. Passengers travel down to underground stations on escalators. They speedily travel around the city in trains through tunnels deep under the ground. This underground tunnel has been dug through a kind of soil called clay. Clay is perfect for tunnels because it keeps water out. Now let's go down even deeper. Under the clay is a layer of rock. This type of rock is called sedimentary rock. This rock formed at the bottom of the seas, lakes, and rivers long ago. Tiny grains of rock and sand gradually settled on the sea floor and built up in layers. Over millions of years, the top layers pushed down on the layers below, squashing them and making them into hard rock. If you're luck lucky, you might find an underground cave. This one formed when water wore away the rock and made holes in it. Watch your head. There are stalactites hanging down from the roof of this limestone cave. Psst. Limestone is a type of sedimentary rock that formed in the sea. Spiky stalactites form when water moves down through sedimentary rock. The water picks up minerals from the rock and eventually drips out through cracks into a cave. When the minerals in the water touch the air, they harden again. These small drips build up to make big stalactites. It can take hundreds of years. At the bottom of the cave, there are more rocky spikes sticking up. This time, they are called stagmites. They build up from the drips falling from the stag staglitites, and they are still growing. In some underground rocks, you might find something that's very useful to humans, coal. There's an underground river flowing at the bottom of this cage. Watch out, the water's very cold. Brr. This coal formed over millions of years ago. After dead plants sank to the bottom of the swamps and became a thick sludge, over time this sludge turned into a soft, dark layer called peat. When the peat was squeezed by rocks pushing down from above and heated from below, it changed into a much harder layer of coal. For hundreds of years, people have dug down to get the coal to burn, burn it for heating or to make electricity. There's another layer of rock here. This is igneous rock. It formed when melted rock from deep inside the earth called magma cooled and hardened. This igneous rock is called granite. You're tra you've traveled a long way down, but you're still only in the top layer of the earth. Let's pick up speed as we delve down even deeper. Hold on tight because things are about to get shaky. We're deep in the earth's crust now and things are moving. The crust is made up of large plates of rock. These rock plates move around and when the edge of two plates rub together, there can be an earthquake. Scientists use a machine called a seismograph to look out for movement in the plates. Even the tiniest wobble can warn them that an earthquake is beginning. The plates of rock that make up the crust sit on a layer of partly melted rock called the mantle. Earth's crust is only about 22 miles thick, but the mantle is more than 70 times as thick. Now that we're getting closer to the center of the earth, things are really getting hot. 
Below the mantle is a layer called the outer core. It's very hot and completely liquid. The outer core is made up of the melted metals, iron and nickel. Right at the center of the earth, you'll reach the inner core. If you go any farther, you'll start coming out the other side. The inner core is the hottest place on the planet, reaching temperatures of almost 11,000 degrees Fahrenheit. It is solid and mostly made up of iron crystals. Iron crystals in the outer core create Earth's magnetic field. Without this, we wouldn't be able to find our way using a compass. The inner and the outer core together are around 4,900 miles thick. No one could really travel down so far. The heat and the pressure are much too intense. Instead, scientists have figured out what is down here by using their seismograph mach machines and com complicated calculations. You still got a very long way to travel before you get back up to the surface. So let's zoom up through the mantle to the crust. Back up at the top of the mantle, there is magma on the move. Where there are cracks in the crust above, magma can move upward. It will burst out as lava erupting from a volcano on the Earth's surface. The rock here at the bottom of the Earth's crust is very hot because it is so close to the mantle. As you travel through the crust, look out for the beautiful, beautiful minerals. What's that sparkling in the rock? It's a diamond. Diamonds are a type of mineral that form deep in the mantle. They form when carbon is heated to a very high temperature by magma and squeezed very hard by heavy rock above it. When the magma moves up towards the Earth's crust, it carries the diamond with it. Move up a bit higher and you'll hit a new type of rock layer. This is metamorphic rock. Metamorphic rock used to be, used to be sedimentary, sedimentary or igne, igneous rock until it was gradually buried so deep down that it became heated by the earth. As the rock heated up, it was also squeezed until it changed. This layer is marble, which started out as, out as a sedimentary, sedimentary rock limestone before it was heated and squeezed. It will gradually get pushed up to the surface when people use it to build statues, building steps and tabletops. In some places, water travels deep under the ground and settles. It will, it will then work its way through gaps in the rocks and trickle out, of, out at the surface as a spring. We're getting closer to the Earth's surface now. Keep an eye out for fossils. Fossils show us that living things that existed millions of years ago, when these creatures died, their bones sank into soft mud. Gradually, more and more layers of mud, clay, and sand covered the bones and they became surrounded by rock. Over time, the bones became rock-like and turned into fossils. Scientists called paleontologists find and study fossils to learn about prehistoric life. Many fossils are tiny, but sometimes they find a complete dinosaur skeleton. How many fossils did you find? Further up, you might find loose stones and forest animal skeletons. You can tell you're close to the surface now because there are tree roots poking down through the soil. There's a forest up above you. Roots are very are very important part of a tree. They hold the tree in the, in the ground so it can stay upright. Roots also take in water from the soil and draw it up to the tree's branches and leaves to keep it alive. As you move up through the roots, you'll probably come across some underground homes. Many bur burrowing animals like to dig their homes close to trees. How many animals can you spot in their cozy homes? A family of foxes live in a hole called a den. Female foxes take care of their cubs in the den until they are old enough to go outside. Badger sets are made up of linked up nesting chambers. Badgers fill their nesting chambers with dry grasses and leaves to keep them warm while they sleep. Now that you're back on the topsoil, you can see the roots of the grass and other plants growing above you. Beetles lay their eggs in the loose soil. When the eggs hatch, lar larvae wiggle out and stay under the ground during the cold winter. A mole is digging his tunnel just under the surface looking for worms and insects to eat. Here are a nest of ant ants. Worker ants go to and from the nest to the surface to find food. They also take care of the young ants and keep the nest safe. You're back on the surface. That pile of earth is a molehill. It was made by that little mole who shoveled the soil he dug out of his tunnel. What a long journey. It's good to see the sunlight again and feel the cool shade of the trees. It's so peaceful here that it's amazing to think about everything that's happening way down beneath your feet.